podium. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Latino World Travelers Travel Parties, which are now virtually because we are in quarantine. Today we have with us Freddie, so we're yes. just going to wait for him to get on board here. He's going to take us on a trip to South Africa today, and I cannot wait. So we're just waiting two seconds, and we will have him present. Uh, just the request. Uh, request. Uh, cool. uh, it's an approval? Yes. Uh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. should be work. Awesome. Awesome. So let's get started, Freddie. Where did you take that picture that you sent us? Uh wow, I sent you so many pictures. Uh which which one? The one I'm uh at the um the south, all the way at the tip. That's the that's the uh I believe that's the uh southeastern point. Of uh, the furthest southeastern point of the African continent, um, I was told that two body of waters meet there. But um, honestly, when you go, when um, whenever you go to that point, it's surreal. Like the oceans are like maybe like 15 feet high, the waves. I mean, and um, it's just so much serenity and so much peace there. And um, when there's high winds, they usually close it. So I was, uh, you know, they closed it when I went, and I. Uh, I told the guy, listen, I came all the way from New Jersey. This is like my last day here. So mm -hmm. I need to do this. It really, it really wasn't, but just, it was, you know, I, I had to do it. Like I couldn't just go out without doing it. Nice. And when did you say that you went there? I went in uh, 2000 and 2016. And um, mm -hmm. I went in December of 2016. So I went in the, in the beginning of their summer which is oh, interesting nice and how was the weather in the beginning of their summer um it was, they're all the way in the south is well, it, it really hot? it really depends what part of uh south africa you go to every part has different weather and every mm -hmm. part has um interesting environments mm, tell us so, about that <laughs> um so basically what i did was um i uh i went from jfk to johannesburg but I already planned my trip as far as like, this is what I'm going to do. And I went by myself as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, my first, the first leg of my trip, I went to uh, Johannesburg, landed at Johannesburg about, um, I want to say 7.30 in the morning. Oh. Um, it was going through customs was interesting. It was very interesting because nice. they're like, you're an American. What are you doing here? And I'm like, well, I'm here to see your animals. I'm here to see your people. They're like, oh, okay visa i mean they're not a visa stamp to passport and then um yeah. i got there early enough where i was able to go to my hotel and check in johannesburg is not the safest place in south africa for me mm -hmm. um it was um it was interesting but i wanted to go you have to fly into johannesburg so i wanted to fly into johannesburg and um i did that i went to the hotel dropped my bags off and i went to the nelson mandela museum because mm -hmm. that's a must that's the must do when you go to Johannesburg. Yeah. So um went there is very emotional. It's um heartbreaking, but it's also educational. Mm -hmm. So it, it gives you a, a grasp of how it was crazy in South Africa just not too many years ago. Mm -hmm. So um that that was amazing. And then um went uh, there's like a little fair right next to the museum. I went there for a few minutes. And then um, by that time, the sun started setting. In Johannesburg, when the sun sets, you go back to your hotel. You know, you don't, especially if you're traveling alone, yeah. you don't go, you know, try to, you just go, go to your room. So I went that, because the next morning, um, I had an early flight from Johannesburg to Kruger National Park. Okay. So uh, I did that. It was about a, it's about a 45 hour, hour flight. So I went, landed in Kruger, uh, in Kruger Park, it's called. It's called. Um, I forgot the name of the airport, but it's um, it's it's beautiful. It's small. Um, you land there, and you. It's a small plane. Uh, it holds it holds maybe about a maybe fifty to seventy max, no more than that. Um, you're when you're flying in, so it's basically flying close to the national park, if not over it, 
you uh -huh. see a bunch of animals. Oh, wow. So it's like the seat and then you see them running. It, it looks like a commercial. Oh, and, um, yeah. We, I hope you made a video. <laughs> yeah, I, I have videos of it. so beautiful. Yeah. So um, I, um, we land, I landed there. And um, from there, uh, it's called, you go to a reserve. A reserve is like almost like their version in Kruger National Park of a, of a resort. Okay. But you have to keep in mind that in Kruger National Park, the animals are not caged. This is an open environment. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's their world. You're a visitor. So everything's open. There's no, you, so we're driving, before we get to the reserve, we're driving on the road. You can't go faster than 20 miles an hour oh. because there's animals crossing. Giraffes, um, rhinos, uh, buffalo, uh, cheetahs, uh, zebras, impalas. So at first I was taking pictures of everything because I'm in the I'm in the um the transportation to the reserve. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my God, ta, 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 ta. and the guy's like, listen, you gotta relax. Cause you're gonna see a lot. I'm like, no, but I you know, I'm from New York. We see cars, we see people, we don't see this. So I took a lot of pictures. Um I saw uh, a pride of uh elephants crossed in front of us with their little mm -hmm. the little one, and it was it was just touching. And then when we got to the reserve, um, I didn't understand that everything was going to be open. So I didn't understand that. I'm like, oh, you know, there's, there's a wall, you know, we go outside the wall and um, I go to my room and, you know, everything is, you know, it, it was a pretty decent, um, it was a pretty decent um, uh, reserve. Mm -hmm. um, amazing, there was uh, all-inclusive food, drinks, uh, uh, three drives a day. So each drive, so you have a drive in the morning at about mm -hmm. five in the morning. Because oh, wow. that's when the animals are waking up. And they're out eating and roaming around. So then you do that for about three hours. And then you come back, you have lunch, you rest, and then you have an afternoon drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, afternoon drive is typically around, uh, maybe around like, two, uh, like one o'clock, one, two o'clock. So we do that. Um, then you come back and then um, you have uh, a night drive. So the night drive is interesting because the night drive, you know, you're in Kruger National Park. There's no oh, lights. No. It's just the stars lit up. The stars, you see shooting stars and you see, um, that's when you see a lot of the the kills, mm -hmm. like the animals that, you know. That so, is so nice. So, but it must be scary yeah, so. at the same time. Actually, um, no. No, they, the animals, it's just weird how the world works there or how life works there because the animals are not scared. They actually hear, like if you, I went out there with a, everywhere I travel, I have my, depending on where I go, I have my professional camera. I love to take pictures. I love it. So I, you know, cameras make noises like, ch -ch -ch -ch. they hear that. And when they hear that, like they're, like for example, I was taking pictures of a of a rhino. If he he or she heard it, and as they hear it, they look, and it almost looks like they posing. <laughs> so every, yeah, it's um it's surreal. Um, and I took um there I have a lot of stories about Kruger National Park. We also had the options of uh, in the morning, early in the morning. Um, I, basically before you go on the morning drive, you go on a morning walk. So, you know, keep in mind, morning walk in, in this, you know, in safari, you could run into buffaloes. So we ran into a pride of buffaloes and um, we have the guide with us, you know, they have their gun just in case for safety and we had a buffalo chase us. So that was interesting. Yeah. So how did you? It, I guess it was trying to tell us to go away. Okay. So it chased us maybe about a hundred feet. And right before he could take out his gun, it just stopped and started like moving his feet in the grass, in the uh, in the dirt, mm. and then it just went back to his pride. Okay. Um, let me see what else. So hippos out there. I didn't see any lions at all. That's the tough one to see. But at nighttime, when we were going, um, we saw a live kill from a it was a cheetah, cheetah. No, a leopard. A leopard. Mm -hmm. It was a leopard or a cheetah killed an impala. So we saw it live, got up the tree with the impala, and then, you know, we took some pictures. And um, 
at nighttime. It was it was getting darker, and we were going. That's a lot of bugs at nighttime. A lot of bugs. I'm talking about bugs that are like this. Like you're like, oh my god, what is this? But never seen can this you before. wear um, a bug spray, or they tell you? Yeah, that yeah you can. Too. You can. Okay. You can. You can. They'll give you bug spray as well. Okay. And um, we were we actually uh were sitting in the truck. We were parked, and we they turned the lights off to the, the truck, and the truck is open. This is not closed. This is open truck. You know, you're safe. Yeah. And then we're seeing shooting stars. And then the guy, the the guard, the um guide is like, listen, wait, 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 listen to this. And then maybe like 10 seconds later, you hear a lion roar. Like the roar of a lion. And we were like, oh my God, let's go, let's go. And he's like, no, that, that lion is about maybe 20 to 40 miles away. No. I'm like, where oh, no way. I, I just heard this. So that was that was amazing, and um Kruger Park. I did Kruger Park for um, did Kruger Park for four days. Mm -hmm. It's highly expensive. Mm -hmm. It's not, but you're getting the experience that you're getting is just surreal. Mm -hmm. But it's just sort of for the viewers. I'm just letting you know the honest truth. Um, Johannesburg is cheap, very cheap. It's very affordable. Um, you'll be able to do a lot of things and stay a lot of places there. Mm -hmm. Kruger National Park. It's pricey. But do you recommend four days or do you think we could do it in less days? Um, it's really based on someone's budget. I would never say do Kruger National Park two days because you also have to understand you, you fly in, fly out in the morning from uh, Johannesburg. And just, just for the viewers, the, the flight from Kruger, from Johannesburg to Kruger, um, since only two airlines operated it, to book it at time. So I, when I booked this trip, I booked it about maybe uh, eight months in advance. So I was already booked. The first thing you book is book the flight. That's the most important thing, especially for me with South Africa, book the flight. And then um, after, after the flight, sorry, I'm getting a call. Um, after, after you book the flight, then you book the, the hotels, mm -hmm. if you go to Kruger, you book the reserves because the reserves are pricey. If you mm -hmm. go alone, um, it's not like, for example, it's not per room, it's per person. Ah, but then so, are yeah. you in a room with other people? No, no, you by yourself. Okay. So there's no, there's no hostels in Kruger, I, at least from what I know, there's no hostels in Kruger National Park or in the surrounding area. There's no American chain hotels. There's no Hilton, no Marriott. Um, from what I've known, things have changed mm -hmm. because this was back in 2016. Mm -hmm. But um, let me see. Uh, the flight, for example, I booked eight months in advance from from uh, Johannesburg to Kruger. It was about two hundred dollars USD. Okay. And if some, keep in mind, it's only a forty-five minute flight, forty-five minutes to an hour, if that. Wow. Uh, so um, let me see. Kruger, where I stood at, it was, um, I did my research on it. It was about, uh, for the five, for, I went from uh, Wednesday to Sunday. So, uh, uh, yeah, went to the Sunday. I uh, paid roughly about maybe $2,500. So it's, wow. it's um, and if you go with someone, that's, it, the price drops a little drastically if you have someone else in the room, but it's not that drastic. But also keep in mind that in that price is included the round trip transfer from the airport, which is, it's about a 45 minute drive. Mm -hmm. um, your meals, your drinks, uh, water, tea, that's all included. Um, so that, that, that was- And the um, service of taking you for- Service is amazing, days. yes. It's amazing. And um, when, one of the crazy experience that I had also in, um, in the reserve, so they come early in the morning, about uh, ask, mm, about maybe four thirty in the morning. They mm -hmm. come, they knock on your on your door because it's this. You know, you have a door, a lock, air condition. You know, you you have a lot. So it's it's pretty. Uh, it's very accommodating. So you, they're knock, and you know, I'm like, oh, I gotta get up. But you know, you have to get up because this is fun. It's all right, fine. I'm, I go brush my teeth, shower, do the essentials. Um, I pack my bag because from there you eat and then they take you on the morning drive. So, so as I get out the room, have everything, 
I hear like the bushes and I'm like, oh my God, what's that? I don't know where, it's a giraffe just walking like nothing. And I'm like, oh my God. And then as I walk more, there was, um, I want to say there was uh, zebras. There was um, impalas are like, um, they're almost like squirrels out there. They're everywhere. Oh, okay. Impalas are everywhere. So they're very common. And I was taking a lot of pictures of them. And it was a waste because you see thousands of them, thousands and thousands. So um, that, that, was, um, that was fun. Um, then from after Kruger, I went to Cape Town. Okay. So from Kruger to Cape Town, it's about a, about a three hour flight. Mm-hmm. Expensive. How much? Super expensive. <laughs> uh, I bought an advance. It's about three hundred fifty dollars, one way. Wow! Wow! So that that was um that was uh interesting because I didn't expect that. But it's a um it's a pretty long flight because you're going from one tip of South Africa to the closest, almost away from the from the whole country itself. Mm-hmm. So that. That, that was good. I would um recommend um when traveling and uh, when traveling in Cape Town. Um, I met a great person mm-hmm. out there, Uber driver, and I still keep in contact to this day with him. I owe I owe any person that goes to South Africa, you could um reach out to me on my social media. I'm like, hey, I'm going to South Africa. I'll give you his number. Amazing. He's I've sent over like 15 people to him yeah. because he was amazing. Because the catch in Cape Town is that to do these excursions with a private company, they charge you so much money. And it's not even worth it. The amount of money they charge you. So his name is Jerome. So with Jerome, um, I had so much fun on, on in Johannesburg and Cape Town and, um, and Kruger that my friend, my best friend was seeing it on social media. Mm-hmm. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to meet you in Cape Town. No way! Cape Town on Sunday. That's like, no awesome. <laughs> so he met me in Cape Town on Sunday. So me and him did Cape Town together. And um, Cape Town, I'm going to tell you how, how crazy it is, like, as far as money hustle. So um, when I landed in everything was, um, everything was fine. I changed money. They were rude, very rude. Cause I, I didn't want the change. I said, you keep the change, just give me back USD. I don't want like coins. Like, I don't, I don't want that. They're like, no. So I'm like, I just changed like 500 US dollars. Like, I don't want the coin. So that was a big argument about it. Um, you don't have to do customs because you're already in the country. So um, the cab ride, that was the interesting part. That's why I say do Uber. Cause the cab ride from the airport to where I stood at in the financial district in Cape Town, it was about a 10 minute okay. drive. You charged me 60 US dollars. Yes. Yes. And you know, that I'm in, insane. I'm in, I'm in, insane. I'm in, I'm in Cape Town. I don't know anybody. I still didn't meet the Uber driver. So be quiet. So, um, you know, I paid the money. And then, um, when I got to the financial area, to my hotel, um, the financial area is very, very, um, Cape Town is safe. Cape Town is very safe. You don't have to worry about nothing. You, um, it's safe. It's very safe. Mm-hmm. When I got to the financial area, um, then I took, a, I took an Uber drive. I took an Uber ride to the mall because I wanted to like, see oh, what the mall is like, well, you know, mm-hmm. it's a different country. That's yeah. where I met Jerome. So he was my Uber driver. So I said, you know what? I like this. And I gave him my WhatsApp and, he was like, oh, what are you going to do tomorrow? And I said, well, you know, my best friend comes later on tonight. He's like, I'll pick him up at the airport. I'm like, uh, okay, but c- can you give me like a better price than $60? He was like, $60? No, it costs seven U.S. dollars. They ripped I'm you like, off. <laughs> seven U.S. dollars. They ripped me off. So that was my experience with as far as cars in uh, Cape Town. So he picked up my best friend for seven dollars, and then um, the dialect because his English was not that great. So we were just like, "Hey, we want to do tours. Where we do tours?" He was like, "With me," and I'm like, "So long story short, we did all the tours that we did. Uh, we went to the uh, to Boulder Beach. That's where the penguins are at. Mm-hmm. Go hang out, take pictures with them. 
we went to the um to the picture I sent you the um saw, um the point. Uh huh. Cape but Cape we of Good there. or something like that. Yeah, Cape of Yes, we went there. That's far as well because that's that's at the end of the island at the end of Cape Town. So that's about a forty five minute drive. Mm -hmm. We did that. Um, we went to uh, Table Mountain. That's mm -hmm. the highest point in South and um yeah in South Africa the highest point in Cape Town I would say as well. Mm -hmm. Um, we did that. Long story short, it was me and my best friend. We did about five excursions for him, mm -hmm. and we paid paid about a hundred dollars for both of us. No. Yeah. Meanwhile, I did the research. Everything that he took us on would have probably cost me and my best friend about five hundred dollars each. <laughs> so Jerome, Jerome is the guy in in Cape Town. <laughs> Jerome is amazing. Oh, he no. saves you a lot of money. <laughs> and um, while we was in Cape Town, um, I'm super adventurous. You know this because we've talked so many times. I'm super adventurous. So you can't go to South Africa without going to dive with great white, with great white sharks. You can't do it. You can't go to South Africa and not do it. You have to do it. So um, we, booked a, we booked an excursion to uh, uh, Gansabi Bay. Kasabi Bay is where they shoot uh, Shark Week. Mm -hmm. So that's like the real deal. These are big sharks. Mm -hmm. They're interesting sharks and they're huge. And I wish that, yeah, they're, they're very, very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think. The drive from Cape Town to Kansabi Bay is about three hours each way. Mm -hmm. So they pick you up. Um, it's a, they pick you up about two in the morning. Cause you're you're in the water by um. Want to say you're in the water by. Twelve, you get there around maybe seven a.m. Then they have to you know they have to read all these things to you and show you videos because safety's first. But um, it's it's really really amazing because these I I love sharks so these this to me it's just amazing and um. It's six people in a cage. So you go, you you know, you put on the wetsuit. And for those people that are scared, they're like, oh my God, I'll never do that. It's sharks. Just do it. Because by the time you put one foot in the water, you forget about the sharks. Because this is the Atlantic Ocean. It's cold. It's like 40 degrees, 50 degrees. And that's different than 50 degrees. Oh, I'm going to wear a jacket. No, this is water. It's cold. Um, it's visible. Um, you're going to get scared. Because, you know, we're talking about a big shark. Um, but they're not biting the cage. They're not, um, they're not, basically you're there, but they just worry about like the food that they're throwing them. So you could get a close picture, a close interaction. Um, you, you definitely meet a lot of people from a lot of parts of the world. So when I was there, I was in the cage. It was, um, uh, to my left was the first person I went in. She was from uh, Australia. So me and her got cool. We still friends to this day. It was me, my best friend, uh, a couple from Germany. Mm -hmm. So we, we all, all of us are cool with each other. We still talk, social media. So, you, you know, you create a lot of friends with, you know, with stuff like that. Plus we all crazy because we actually did it. We did it a second. The first group that went in, there weren't a lot of sharks around because it was the first, they were trying to get them in. Then the second group, third group, there was about maybe like 13 sharks around the cage. Wow. Just swimming. And yeah. So that and was, you that recorded was this, right? Yes, I have I have video footage and pictures. And yeah, because this is crazy. This is like like everyone that everyone that on my social media that when I posted a picture, they was like, No, you're crazy. I'm like, but you live once. Hello. You, you live once. So you so you have to, yeah, you have to do this. So did you take, what kind of camera did you take to record the you underwater? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when I went, um, I totally didn't bring a camera at all. Um, and then I recommended everybody, make sure you bring a GoPro or something like that. To I, had a, I had a GoPro. I didn't when I went. <laughs> I had a GoPro. That was, um, that was pretty good. They also take pictures from the boat, but I didn't really buy their pictures because um, it just, they're, they're taking pictures like from up, from high above. So it just made no sense to buy pictures from them. They, um, they did video as well, selling video, like as far as in the cage. But um, I have my GoPro. And then the, the, the girl that I got cool with from Australia, she had her GoPro, but 
me and my best friend, we were um, in the middle of the cage. So that's where all the action is. Like the sharks are coming straight. And then as soon as the cage, they're about to get to the cage, they turn. So that's scary. That, mm -hmm. like, and um, that, was, that was fun, but you have to do that. It's cheap. It's not that expensive. Um, at that time, I think we pay $170 each for transportation and the actual uh, shark dive. You don't go deep in the water. You go maybe about three feet deep as far in the water. So with the cage, it goes maybe it's on the side of the boat. You go in and the cage might go down like maybe two feet. So you still have, your head could still be above the water, but the waves are going to hit you. But it's, it's, a, it's a great experience. Mm -hmm. It's really, really a great experience. Very um, nice. So we have a couple of questions from people. One person asked, what camera and lens do you use? I have a, I have a Canon. Mm -hmm. uh, shit, that's a good question. <laughs> um, Mark III, Mark IV. Okay. One, Mark three, Mark four. Uh, the lens. I switch up the lens. Um, if you go to, if you uh, do South Africa, I would recommend getting. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to buy. You can rent these things. I didn't know. I wasn't educated on it, so you could rent lenses. You can even rent a camera. So you could. Um, it's not even that expensive. You could rent a body of a good, like five thousand dollar camera for maybe about forty dollars a day. Over there. Not bad. No, here. In the U.S. Oh, really? So before you do your Where? trip, you can rent it. Um, there's a lot of places, especially in New York, that rent camera. You can even rent a GoPro. You don't have to buy these things. You could actually rent it. So I learned next time I go to, because to me, South Africa is in my top five. South Africa is a strong between one and two for me. I would move to South Africa. Wow. That's how amazing it was out there. Um, but I... Um, the lens, as far as lens, I would recommend don't buy a lens. Lens are expensive. So the lens that you, if you go to Kruger Park, you need a, a zoom lens. So you need um, 700 millimeters, maybe 1200. Those lens could run you anywhere between 2500 to five grand. But if you rent it, you could rent it for like 30 to $60 a day. Mm -hmm. And you have insurance on it. So if you lose it or it breaks, you don't have to pay for it. So it's it's pretty smart instead of buying yes. it. Um, Especially if you only need it for like one or two trips and not necessarily. Exactly. I know the GoPro is pretty cheap with them. I believe for like a whole trip up to two weeks, it's about $100 to rent it. So it's like, who needs to buy these things? So now I learned I'm not buying no more lens because I bought different lens and I'm like, no, um, no more. I have a, a 50 millimeter lens which is more like to get like, you can capture like, a, if you see a, a beautiful like flower or a plant or some, even even take a picture of someone, that's pretty cool to take a picture. But you know, we're talking about the-, the well, Someone the mentioned the Adorama. Person. Adorama is a good place to rent them from. Yes, yes, they're good. They're very, very good. I don't even know how to look. Oh, Thank man. you, wow, Jojo. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a chat. Um, Yes. Okay, now so. we have more questions too from the Zoom group. Um, do you need yes. to see a doctor before going to South Africa? Do no. you need any vaccines? vaccines? No, you don't need no vaccines. Okay, great. Hold on, let me okay. Know okay. What's the exchange rate and is it favorable to the dollar? It's uh we're rich out there. Really? Yeah, we're um um if you are all right, another thing that I would say about uh South Africa is a, I don't know if a lot of people that see this, are, they're into jewelry. It's cheaper to buy diamonds out there. Mm. So diamonds are very, very cheap. Um, they take, in, in South Africa, as long as you're not going to like a mom and pop store, like to get something to eat, like like a small um, home-based restaurant or something like that, they take American Express, Visa, MasterCard, Discover. They take everything out there. So um, you can get... I had to stay away from the jewelry stores because you could spend a lot of money. I can but you'll imagine. get more, you, you'll get, you know, it's definitely 60% cheaper out there than out here. Because there's no middleman, there's no bringing it, you're, you're basically, so that was, that was tough to say no. Wow. Exchange rate, I don't know what the exchange rate was, but um, I think I'm, 
I think I spent maybe um oh maybe in, in South Africa itself. I didn't spend more. I was there for ten days. I didn't spend more than two hundred dollars spending. Mm -hmm. So eating was cheap. Um, me and my best friend went to when we was in Cape Town. We went to eat. We had uh, two lobsters each, uh, mm -hmm. shrimps, French fries, a bunch of beers and shots, and it was less than a hundred dollars. Wow, that's good. So, Definitely. Is there any restaurant that you recommend because it was so good that you're everything is everything. Okay. Everything. Everything is amazing. Um, there's a there's a a, a pier in uh, Cape mm -hmm. Town. There's only one pier out there. It's amazing. It's uh pretty good. Go early because they they're not like us here that they stay late. They mm -hmm. stay open late. They stay uh they close pretty early. The mall was it was cool. The only thing that's expensive out there is clothing. Mm. Like it's not cheap. It's not cheap because you have to pay the taxes, which you get the money back when you leave because we don't live in South mm -hmm. Africa. So we're tax exempt. So you get the money back. So that was, that was expensive. I noticed that like I'm, I bought like, I bought like maybe two pairs of sneakers there and I paid maybe about $60 more expensive than mm -hmm. what I would have got it here. Yeah. So that was oh, by the way, cool. he's a sneaker collector. So how yeah, many this, do you have? Um, this is like that's like a little part of it. Um, I'm at um, well, like four and change. Four hundred and some, or mm -hmm. four? Okay, yeah. Four hundred, not thousand. I okay. used to, I used to have about maybe about six to seven hundred, but I got rid of a lot of things. Okay. So I'm about 400. I have to go through a bunch of stuff to try to get rid of stuff. Yeah. But that's great. <laughs> and you get really cool sneakers too. Like when you show them on your Instagram, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I get a. I have a lot of good friends in great places, so they they take care of me yes. from time to time. Um, someone asked, uh, how expensive, oh, you already talked about that, about the tours. They were like about a hundred something dollars each, but you were able to if, get Yeah, about, if you do it by yourself, yeah. If you do it through like tour or uh, trip advisor or anything like that, you're going to, you're going to pay a lot of money. You might get a deal, who knows, but, um, it's pretty cool. It was, it was pretty, um, I would say, um, call Jerome, text yes. Jerome. He, he does it all. Where should someone stay if they want to stay in a tribe or see a tribe? Did you see anything about that there? Uh, um, when you, all right, let me explain something to the viewers. South Africa is very, very Americanized. You're not going to see those things. That's like more like Kenya, um, Mozambique, uh, Zimbabwe, and, and uh, countries like that. But as far as like South Africa, they're extremely Americanized. Uh, they have high rise buildings. They have, uh, let me see what else, cars everywhere. No one, like you don't see as far as like animals, like, you know, like lions and things like that. You don't see that in the street in South mm -hmm. Africa. So you don't, you have to go out, out of the city. Cape Town, you're not like, I wasn't like leaving my hotel and I'm like, oh, they go to the giraffe in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. No, you have to go out to like the countryside and see those things. But I, I never, I didn't see no tribes. And um, uh, I always talk to the locals because to me, it's like, that's where you learn the most. Mm -hmm. In um, South Africa, the legal yeah. drinking age, it's 14 or 15. Yeah, really? Yeah. So, you know, the, um, everybody, not to scare nobody, but out there, like everybody got a gun. So, you know, you just, it's just, you know, it's like almost like the U.S. A lot of people got guns. We just don't see them. But mm -hmm. out there, you see it. Um, I didn't, not once did I, like, fear for my life out there. Maybe when I was in Johannesburg, I was like, oh, shit, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I perfected the art of how to take my watch off with one hand when I was in um, Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't wear, like when you go out there, you don't wear no flashy stuff. 
You don't wear no chains, no no diamond earrings or stuff like that. You go out there very nonchalant, normal. Um, yeah. You know, you don't need to. You don't need nothing flashy out there because a lot of the people out there come from poverty. So, mm -hmm. you know, they they might do something that they don't want to do just to survive. So, but as far as everything was great out there, I would recommend it to anyone. Um, I would move out there. So that just says mm -hmm. a lot. I, I have a friend who moved out there and she's having the time of her life. I have a coworker that where I work at, cause I work for an airline. He's, um, he's moving out there. Ah. But, and I'm like, I don't, I don't blame you. Yeah. It's, it's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, someone asked, where do you recommend someone change money since you had trouble changing money? Um, I see that. Um, let me see. Uh, where do you recommend money change a bank? Um, uh, there's exchange places there where I try to exchange money was, um, the only place I had a problem in was in, uh, in Cape town and a guy, he was just a jerk. Maybe he had a bad morning. Maybe he didn't want to come to work. I don't know. But besides that, everybody else was very nice. So, um, it was, it was cool. Um, I'll, I'll give you Jerome's info. Um, uh, how much was the white expedition? It was about, at that time, it was about $170. Um, for transportation and uh, the shark experience. Mm -hmm. um, let me see what else. Uh, ju -ju -ju -ju. Yeah, I would let me, um, which phone is it on? It's on this phone. Hold mm -hmm. on. Um, let me, so I no can put said it that You here. can rent a drone too. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you can rent drones. I bought, I, I didn't have a drone then, but I bought, um, I had a, um, I had I bought a drone later. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I learned my lesson. Jerome, here it is. I'm gonna put his number here, so uh, everyone can have it. Instagram um, is acting up. It's freezing, I guess. No, that's because I I paused oh. it so I can oh. write the number. Oh, okay. So he's gonna be right back, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um. Seven, so also, someone said that um. The camera equipment rental, if you book it through the weekend, you don't get charged on Saturdays and Sundays because they don't open those days. And they oh, I, I didn't, Sabbath, so you I, don't get charged. I didn't know that at all. That I've never, nice. I, um, I never uh, rented anything, but I learned from it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put in the chat the information, his number. Um, just make sure you get connected again with the live uh, so people can hear what you're saying. Oh no. So it's gonna be you right gotta, back, guys. You gotta send it again. Yeah. So you have to request it again. Yeah, let me see. Oh, okay, here we go. Yeah. Oh. Any more questions, guys? If you are in the right here, yeah. If you are in Zoom, just unmute yourself and you can ask the questions directly through Freddie. Or if you're in Instagram Live, just you have a question mark at the bottom, you can ask the questions there. Oh yeah, that's the best phone number we've gotten. Yeah, that's uh, that's Jerome. Just tell him that Freddie. Just tell him Freddie from the um from the U.S. And then he's like, Oh, Freddie, how is he? Everybody that I send to him, they always send me a WhatsApp picture with him. And then I'm like, Oh, so it's like what. What one person can do connecting with so many people. So it's yeah. like, you know, I don't, I met him one time, but I saw how I was out there, how you have to hustle to make money. So I said, you know what? I have friends that travel. Like I was the first one where I work at to go to South Africa. Well, maybe the second, but a lot of people don't say where they go. And then after I went out there, my experience and the pictures and the videos about six seven people went after me wow. and they all linked up with him so mm -hmm. it's like yeah so it's like even even if it's not like south africa like i know people in other places like drivers and stuff like in mm -hmm. bali and um uh australia new zealand so i know these people so i, I like yeah. like hey friends going i leave friends Absolutely. with Mm -hmm. And um, did you go to the wineries there? I know South Africa is big for wine. I, I, I didn't. I didn't make it to the wineries because I had like my um, 
my time out there was so crunched. So it, I, I didn't have enough time. I only had uh, two weeks to go out there because after South Africa, I went to another, I went to two other countries. Uh-huh. And then um, it was bad leaving South Africa because I was flying from uh, South Africa to, uh, to Amsterdam. But I was flying Lufthansa, and at that time, the pilots went on strike. So my flight was canceled. Oh, no. So my flight's canceled. So I had to book another flight on British Airways to London, have a layover in London, then London to Amsterdam. And that was the worst. That was like the worst. Um, but no, um, I'm trying to think what else am I missing with South Africa. Did you, did you the, go to the uh, jail where Mandela was? I know a lot I of didn't people do, I do didn't, that sometimes. I didn't, that's on Robin's, um, Robin Island. Robin's Island. Yeah, I didn't make it to yeah. that. Um, what about Lesotho? It. Did you go there? Uh, I know a lot of people go there. Yeah. No, I didn't. I, I was, when, when I was home, like planning this trip, I, I basically had a map of South Africa and just to see how far things were. And I said, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I love wine. I didn't make it to the winery because it was just so far out. So it was between wine or sharks. I said, not sharks. We're going to do sharks. I can have wine in New York, in New Jersey, in Cali, anywhere. <laughs> That's but, exactly uh, what I did. I had to choose yeah. between the two and I chose shark diving. But it wasn't in the plans because when I went, I just went with the wind and I didn't plan that trip at all. Was you scared? Well, I, I was not scared, no. But um, I, I just said, oh, I'm going. And one person said, uh, oh, I'll meet you there. So it was the first time I've ever met that person in, like, in person. And we met for that trip for 10 days. And it, we had a wow. fabulous time, but she wanted to go to the wine. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to the wine. I just saw this flyer that you can go shark diving. And I'm like, I'm going to call it and I'm going to go. So that's why I didn't have a camera because I didn't even know that was there. Wow. You know what? A, a lot of, just to go off the topic a little, um, a lot of people are scared to travel alone. You shouldn't. Not me. <laughs> you shouldn't. Like, especially females, because it's like, you know, you're going to a different country, different, um, different everything. So, but like, I would say like, just go with your, do it, go with your instincts. If you don't feel safe, then just leave where you at. But as far as like, you get so much love when you leave our country and you go to other countries yeah like i'm on i'm on right now i'm on um 54 countries so far there's not one country that i could tell you shit i didn't like that country they feel bad like sometimes they feel bad for me because they're like you're president man <laughs> so yeah so they feel bad for me but like I just, it was every country I've been to has been an amazing experience. That's why it was so hard for me to pick which country. Like it's just hard because yeah. every country has a story, and mm-hmm. every country is like it's just amazing. Like some people, are like oh my god, I can't afford to go away. Yes, you can. Just look at the amount of money you spend on unnecessary stuff, yeah. and when you add that all up in a year, that's the trip I just made. It's all about priorities at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. See and the night thing life. is, also you don't have to travel in luxury. You can experience a country and travel with a budget. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, you know, every, you, you just have to do the proper research. The further you go, the more research you have to do. Mm-hmm. Like, this is like another, this is far. Mm-hmm. This is really far. And it hits you like um, it hits you when you like when you get to South Africa. Well, more like when you get to Kruger, back to Kruger. When you get to Kruger, when you come out of the plane, like it hits you like because it's like all natural grass and like that green. You know, like it's like mm-hmm. man, it just clear my sinus. It's, it's strong. It's it smells rich. Mm-hmm. It smells like almost the way it smells when it's about the rain and you're in the islands and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, I smell the trees and the grass and it mm-hmm. smells like that, but times like maybe a hundred. And um, 
like I yes. I I loved it. I I loved it. Um yes. it was it was amazing. <laughs> amazing. Um even if you want to drive out there, it's safe in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. A lot of people what they do is um they rent a car and they drive uh, the coast. The coast is almost what y'all have in Cali mm -hmm. with the whole coast, uh the whole uh uh shit Pacific Coast. Mm -hmm. where you have the beautiful views, the sunset. They ha That's the same thing in South Africa, but just times like a hundred because it's just, it's surreal. Like, yes. the, like this, it's beautiful, beautiful. I didn't drive out there because I don't like driving in other countries, mm -hmm. but we, we drove, we had him drive the coast for us and yeah. it was just like, wow. Yes. And if you take, um, if you go to Robben Island and you take the boats, you will see the dolphins in the water. I heard about that. I love dolphins. So I, I heard about that. I heard um I I know coworkers that went to Robben Island, mm -hmm. so I asked them questions. How was it? They show me pictures, videos. So that's you know it looks like a cool like, cool experience. I didn't go to Robben Island because I went to the museum. Mm -hmm. So it's almost similar. Yeah, it is. You in you get the experience of where he stood at when he mm -hmm. was locked up mm -hmm. and um the museum you getting his whole life in one place yeah so it's like you you getting um you're getting everything like you have the ropes that they used to hang people with you have it's just so much you have the 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 tanks that uh the the locals used to shoot up when when they were going through the whole racism and when you see the bullet holes in the tank, you see, so it's like, you see, like, it's not a made up thing. And it's just like, it touches you different mm -hmm. to me. Like, cause I understand like Robin Island, like he spent so many years here. This is where he fought for his mm -hmm. freedom. This is where he changed a country. I get it. Yeah. But you have to understand before that, what was it that led him to go into that cell and that prison? Yes. So it's just, it was cool. It was, mm -hmm. um, it was really cool. Which ticket um, did you get to get in? Did you have to go in through the black side or the white side? I went, you know, I went black. Okay. So and you choose where you want to go in through because if you go to the white side, you'll see everything from the white perspective. Yes. And if you go to the black, you see everything from, from, the black. Yeah. from our perspective because we all, all, and you can be Dominican, Puerto Rican, whatever nationality, um, you are, that's not um, Caucasian, you're gonna see things different from a different light when you go through that side. Oh, someone, like, someone is asking if you can go through both. No, I think you have to pick. They give you a ticket and it says like- You like, a ticket. I mean, you could, uh, at the end of, your, at the end of your, your tour, you could go back in and you could go on the other side. So it's like, it's just, a, it's maybe about a 500 foot entrance where you see like they, like when you go to the black side, it got all documents, pictures of the slaves. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the white side, I don't remember for verbatim what it was, but I think it was like the, the masters and stuff like that. Like I didn't really pay attention to the white side. I'm I'm honest, because mm -hmm. the 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 black side was just so tough. I cried too. I came out uh, yeah, sobbing. I cried. My picture at the end, it was like serious. I couldn't even smile for the picture at the end. The first picture I took was like in the entrance of black, white. So, you know, I'm smiling. And as soon as I went in, I was the first thing that came to mind was like, oh shit. Because I went out there not knowing anything. I was like, Nelson Mandela, freedom, yes, the movie was great. But when you when you go into the museum, like I didn't see not one person cry. It was like even though even the guys that might think that they're tough, huh? They were like, "Yo, I got something in my eye." So they were like, it was it was just touching how one person can go through so much, and he was able to change a country because he changed that country for the better. Because God knows if that country was running like it was before, I would have never went to South Africa. Yes. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. Um, Do you somebody guys... said about nightlife. Uh, they said, um, how was the nightlife? nightlife? Oh, how is it? Uh, the nightlife. The nightlife was. It was. It was okay. Um, 
and like I said, everything closes early. So then what the young kids do is they have parties in the street. And it's just like nobody's like, you know, like it's just different. Like they know that you're an outsider. So they're like, oh my God, how you doing? In Cape Town, the English is better. So it's, it's much more, you get to understand them more. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's friendly. They give you directions everywhere. Um, I went to a couple, we went to a couple like bars. I didn't, I, I didn't go to no clubs out there. We went to bars and they were cool. They were packed. Mm -hmm. They were cool. We went to a, a bar. It was, uh, I forgot the name of it, but they had, I will never forget that they had like 99 beers. Mm. So it was like, oh my God, taste this, taste this. And I was in Cape Town. Um, everything is close to the financial district as far as like the mall, the market, um, the jewelry stores mm -hmm. and uh, eating. And this is a walking distance and also like the bars and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Table was Mountain. Table it's Mountain. close. Mm -hmm. Table Mountain is a must do. You could. Uh, <laughs> did you go during the day or did you go for sunset at night? At Table Mountain? Yes. In the morning. In the and morning. We made okay. a mistake. Me and my best friend made a mistake. Why? You got two options. Well, you've been out there. You got two options. You Can't could remember. take. You could take the monorail. The, uh -huh. the, the Or you could climb up. You could sail <laughs> you up. You chose to climb up? <laughs> oh, man. This the bad thing was that we were climbing and we were like about an hour into it. And we went not, we went, me and my best friend, we went out there like, we try to look, you know, we try to look right for the pictures. Cause like, <laughs> oh my God, we got to take pictures for Instagram. Huh? So, you know, we had black tees on, it was hot. We had cargo shorts, it was hot. We had sneakers, not comfortable. So after an hour going up the mountain, we stopped someone that worked there. We're like, how much to the top? He was like, man, you got about maybe two hours. Ooh, we're like, no, no, no. Wow. We go downstairs again. We walk back down 30 minutes and we took the um the um the little uh, cart. Oh and wow. the little cart is is dope because it rotates. So when you're going up, like it gives everyone a fair view. So I like that idea of what they did there with the cart, you're in the cart and it 360 rotates. So not one person doesn't get a view of South mm -hmm. of Cape Town. Yeah. So that was pretty that was pretty cool. Um, pretty, I know that after 5 p.m. they have a different price if you like because you have less time to explore there and they have a cafe all the way up there too. You could that, I remember and then they got like the little animals up there. I forgot. They look like they look like beavers, but I forgot the name of them. But um we saw a lot of those up there. We saw um Oh, we saw a lot of birds up there, huge birds. Um, but we went early in the morning. Um, it was um, it was cool. That's one of the seven wonders of the world. Oh, That's what the, okay. uh -huh. Table Mountain, yeah. It's one of the, it's up there. Because I took a picture next to the sign. Um, it's not that expensive. It was maybe about, uh, for Table Mountain, it was about maybe 15 US dollars, maybe, if that. Might have been cheaper. Um, a lot of tourists, of course. So you have a lot of buses that go there. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, there's a lot of hostels in um, in Cape Town. You know, some are good. I never stood at a hostel ever. Like, so, but I, I don't know. I, it's never been, like, I've never been into those experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, so much information. Thank you so much something. for all of this. <laughs> Did you no guys problem. have any questions? No problem. Yeah, let me know. I'm here. You know. I know Instagram is gonna cut us at an hour in when it hits an hour, so we have a couple of minutes. But if well, you're we Zoom, again. if you're in Zoom, we are more than welcome to um, join us in Zoom. The link is in bio, and we can continue the talk there. It's more private, more intimate. You can ask the questions directly to him. I know sometimes the live is a little difficult for that kind of stuff. Um, any more questions about South Africa? How much was the flight going from New York there? Um, hmm, let me see. Um, all right. For me, it was different because I used my flying benefits to book the flight. Mm. From There's just the, the long one from, uh, from JFK to Johannesburg. That's, I, I use my flight benefits, so it was different. But right now, 
in the in the in the crazy state that we in right now, you can get a flight right now for next year, and um maybe to to like uh, fly into Cape Town and um just uh, choose the dates correctly to depart because you want to be able to get in as many uh, dates as you can, as many places as you can. Like with me, like the next time I go to South Africa, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna use Johannesburg to connect. So I'm not gonna do like my my thing is I'm gonna do um I wanna go to Kruger again, but I'm gonna do it backwards. I'm gonna go uh fly to Johannesburg from Johannesburg the same day, fly into Cape Town, do the Cape Town thing, do the shark stuff again. Um from Cape Town, I'm gonna um I'm gonna go to um Mozambique, uh Tanzania, uh I want to go to Kenya. Trip. I want to. I want to go. Like I want to. But I'm. I'm. You know. I'm basically the way I'm gonna do it is Cape Town three days. So I land the same day that I get there. Mm -hmm. So the first day that I'm there, nothing. The next day, the sharks. The third day, go to another country. And you know, mm. and because Africa is like South Africa is beautiful, but. Outside of South Africa, the what I've heard from my friends is just surreal. Yes. Like my friends, um, I have four friends that maybe more that probably haven't told me that went to Kenya. They have yeah. nothing but amazing things to say. Yes. Amazing, amazing. Because most of those places are natural and unspoiled, and and you could see everything like before it gets modernized and Americanized. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like black, what's up, black? How you doing? <laughs> Do you guys have any questions about South, South Africa? We have him here. Anything you want to ask? Um, let me see. Well, just remember that if you want to travel within Why can't other you countries. For South Africa. For what if you want to make accommodation in South Africa? It, it really depends on your budget. It depends on what you're working with. Like um, if you book a hotel with enough time, you can get a Marriott hotel out there uh because there's a lot of marriott chain hotels in south africa so you can get a marry if you book it with enough time you can get a marriott hotel out there for about 60 dollars a night so you know because th believe it or not a lot of people don't go out there from the u.s there's a lot of europeans there's a lot of uh uh tourist asian descent like me a latino i, I might have been I didn't see I one Latino in my entire trip. No. I think I was like, when I was out in South Africa, I might have been the only Dominican out there. Because mm -hmm. people, people will ask me, the locals, so where are you from? And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm from originally from New York, but I live in New Jersey. So I'm like, oh, I'm from New Jersey. And they're like, um, what? What's, what is that? So when, what about your ethnicity? I say, oh, my parents are Dominican. They're like, what? I'm like, you know, Jamaica? Jamaica, Bob Marley, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah across from jamaica <laughs> yeah so um yes but that's why we created latino world travelers to change that narrative yes. that we don't yes. travel yes we do and we're gonna make it even bigger and better we want to make sure we inspire everybody to travel we give people these resources conversations with you so they can feel empowered to go out there make their plans and go to south africa that's pretty much I, have, I have a lot of friends that um they don't travel because they have kids. And I understand that. I don't have I don't have children. I have two dogs. Those are my kids. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. And um I was um, you know, I didn't hit that point in my life to have children. But um, you know what you could do? You could follow me and you can see the world through me. Yes. And it's like you there. And I've had I've had like random, random people that follow me on Instagram. And like I had a I had a lady from um Kentucky. I've never been to Kentucky in my life. Wow. And she she ended up follow she ended up finding my page because I'm one of my frat brothers. He has the um, uh, road to a hundred countries. Uh huh. So he has that. So that's his that's his uh his uh IG his company. And um, she ended up finding me through him. And she sent me a DM one day, which I ended up printing out. And I have it. I have it in my house somewhere. It's uh in my foyer right by my bathroom. And it was the most amazing message, like. I don't know you. I think I'm trying to kick it to you, but I have four kids. I can't afford to do none of the trips you want. So every time you go to different countries, I live through you. Like I live through you. I 
I'm like, wow, this is tough. Yeah. And then I just, I, I use that, I use that perspective to like, you know, like, I don't, me personally, I never used to like to take pictures or video because I don't like, I don't really like, I'm not into the showing off, showing off type. But after I got that message, I was like, wow. So maybe there's people that see the world through my eyes because they maybe can't do it. So then I started taking more videos, more pictures. Yeah. And then um, the tribal community is huge. Yes. The life got cut off, but it's okay. <laughs> Unless you want to go back into it. No, it's on, it's do, you on you. More, do you think you have more questions? Um, anyone has any more questions? You said, or anything you you said to travel there next year to South Africa. He said he What's your question? Uh, South Africa for next year. I mean, you could get it. Um, you could get um, if you're trying to make the trip next year. I would advise like start looking at it now because yeah. the economy is not doing too well, and on top of that, like we're going through a crazy time where a lot of people possibly might lose their jobs. They might um, things are not going to be the same. So it's like you could probably now after get a couple, flight after, now after like two huh? three months. After two to three months, we won't be going back to uh, travel, right? Um, I say the traveling will go will go back to normal in a few months. I I I hope it goes back to normal in August because I'm going away. But if not, um, I, I would say like I say August, September, October maybe, because you know what, what happens is when you got a you got a I, I work for an airline, so when you got something like this going on, you got a customers have to feel comfortable again, and that takes time. You know, like you, you know, they not. No matter if you put the price for free, almost you still, you know, they still have to believe and know that they're not gonna get sick. But I, I would, um, I, I was looking at tickets to South Africa like for 2021, and it was looking like six hundred dollars round trip. That's amazing because that's a twelve hundred dollar flight. Are those flights out of Newark? Since you said you live in New Jersey. Or out um, of out of JFK. JFK. Okay. Um, I would, I would, yeah, I would. Um, uh, Newark, they they do fly to um, cause um, I flew a uh, South African Airways out there, mm -hmm. and um, they fly direct. If you go like a Delta, Delta is the other airline that flies out there, but they only fly out there out of Atlanta. So you have to commute in Atlanta. And mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. So South African, um, South African Airways were pretty. They were pretty, pretty good. No, no, I had no complaints about them. I think the only airline that um I was iffy about, and I probably won't travel again on them, is a uh, British. Yeah, they're not good. So South uh, Africa is direct from JFK to Cape Town or to Johannesburg. Yes, yes ma'am, jo jo Johannesburg. Nothing. Okay. Um, nothing. Um. I was told that nothing flies direct from the U.S. to Cape Town. Um, I guess it just doesn't make sense for them because uh, Johannesburg is their hub. Right. For, at least for South African Airways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. No problem. Anytime. Oh, and the number you gave us from Jerome, is that the 27, um, the country code? uh yeah the star uh the plus with everything yeah you put that on put that in whatsapp and then just shoot them a whatsapp like whenever you do go out there um i recommend hitting them like if you already have a trip book i recommend uh, hitting him up a little bit early just right. so um you could uh plan out everything but um like, like i said with him it's uh, it's safe um i wouldn't recommend anything to you that wasn't safe um it's like i i um I've connected him with about, like I said, 10 to 15 people and not one person said anything bad. I just had everybody that has hit me from out there and they're like, hey, what do you recommend me giving you, giving him as a tip? I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's up to you. He's like, he's amazing. He, um, you know, he took care of us every day and he's just amazing, amazing. And if you one, need a I, contact I think, for South Africa, for um, Johannesburg, since you say it was a little dangerous, I have a contact for Johannesburg if you need one. I, I don't like Johannesburg at all. I, I didn't like it. The people, the, the you know what it is that um, the people are are good. It's just the atmosphere. I, I don't like how it's set up. I don't like how much of a poverty it is. 
Because when you're in a place full of poverty, um, you never want to look to that person like you're the meal ticket all the way out. So it's, you know, um, so it's just it's like, like in, in Cape Town, Cape Town doesn't have poverty. It has poverty than of Johannesburg. In Johannesburg, you might have a, a, a female, a mother on the side of the road, and she's with two kids carrying them. And she still has like a, 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 a bowl of like rice or, or, or bread on her head and trying to sell them. And it's like, that is like, to me, I was just like, oh snap, this is real. Like, this is like, wow. Like, so uh, that, that made me feel safe. But, you know, at nighttime, I just saw things that I was like, okay, I don't want to be out here at nighttime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard that many times from people. They they say not to walk uh, in certain areas and and to just be safe. Yeah. So you know, I um, just to me, Cape Town is just so much like Cape Town is like um, New York meets LA. Miami. And meets like a bunch of the islands, like, like you know, like a Puerto Rico, DR, like you know, the Bahamas. And it's like I wouldn't recommend going into the beach in South Africa because you never know what you're gonna see there. Yeah. Nah, nah, don't go in the water. Yeah. Those sharks will come up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you guys have any more questions? If not, then um. Thank you so much, Freddie, for being here, for giving us all of this information. We are so happy that you were able to make it. I know you were feeling a little under the weather. And I, I, I um, crazy thing, I, I got the, um, it's just unfortunate, but I have the virus. So um, it's yes. just tough. I was People looking at you home. and I was like, oh my God. Yeah, stay home. This is tough. Uh, I'm I'm home quarantining for another week or so. Um, it's tough. Like a lot of people take it as a joke. Don't don't even like don't even play with this. It's like this is not. A lot of people thought it was a joke. It wasn't true. Oh, it, it's true. It's real. Like you know, shout to all my friends that reached out to me just to check on me and my coworkers. But um, it's real. Like it's real. It breaks you down, and when you're getting better, it breaks you down again. And it says, "I'm here, and I want you to know I'm here, and I'm gonna make your life miserable, and I'm gonna make it hard for you to breathe." And I'm, you know, and and a lot of my friends know that I'm, I'm a funny guy. I like to crack jokes. I like to laugh. I love my sneakers, but virus could take all of that. All of that. If you don't really take care of yourself, just stay home. The longer you stay home, the, the quicker we all stay home, the quicker we get to have a hot summer again. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to know that you're feeling much, much better and that you were able to share this beautiful story with us of your trip to South Africa. You light up when you were talking about it. Yeah, it was amazing. Good like I want I, I wanted to do with the one you told me to do. Um I want I, I want you to do um what was it Israel but just South Africa is like ah oh, it's just like oh. yes even while talking to you about South Africa I was looking at flights I was like wait yeah. wait wait well there are gonna be future opportunities because my goal is to keep doing this once a month after um, April ends so we could keep giving people you know experiences and encouragement to to continue traveling. So I have listen, I have um I have uh fifty three more countries I could talk about. So you let me know if you ever need me again. I'm here, I'm always available for you, whatever, whatever. It is not even listen, you don't even gotta ask me, consider it done. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And tomorrow we're having another speaker. We're having Wilson, he's gonna present Sandy Times in Morocco. It's gonna be at four Eastern time, one Pacific time. So I hope you can join us, guys, tomorrow. Yes, virtually. Next week we have I'm, a whole. I'm gonna join lineup. that. Yes, just go to the link in bio and.
click where it says register so you can join us here in Zoom. Then yeah, on Monday, we're going to have Egypt. Then we're going to have Puerto mm -hmm. Rico. Then Dominican Republic, Mexico, Malta, Greece, Ecuador, Honduras. So we're having a whole bunch of countries. I'm, I'm going to um, join the ones, the countries I haven't been to. Yeah, that's that's absolutely. Gonna be interesting. Yeah, and I like you this. You can go to our um, YouTube and look at the previous episodes. We've been doing it for almost three weeks. So if there is that's a country good. there that you haven't been, more than welcome to watch the episode. I like this, man. I like it. Um, this is well. And like, I, like you said, we need something like this for, for our Spanish community because, you know, we're coming up. We're coming up. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much and have a beautiful day. Um, no problem. Be, be love. I didn't know that was you, be love. Yeah, you know, it's me. How you been, man? Yeah, <laughs> man. How you been, man? I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's great Let to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you for the oh, opportunity. Yeah. Yes, and um, and y'all keep doing keep doing what you're doing, man. This is amazing, and um, you know, remember, it starts small, it's gonna become huge. Yes. That's how it is. Yes. Inspiring yes. one Latino at a time. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Adios. Yes. Thank you.